so today is Monday, April 29th, and on Sunday, I run my first ever full marathon. Yeah, we're here. I'm absolutely shocked. Like, I cannot believe we are here and this is the week is happening. Like, just been absolutely insane. But to be totally honest with you, at this point, I'm really excited. Like, I can't wait to just get going. I can't wait to just push my body to somewhere it's never been before, something I've never done before. I am really excited to do that. So yeah, I'm sure I'm going to have a freak out later on in the week, but for now we're good. We're chilling and I'm excited to get it done. So I wanted to vlog this. I haven't vlogged in a long time, but I wanted to mark this big occasion. I also want to look back at this and smile and watch it so that is what my goal is i'm going to bring you through the whole week and how i'm preparing for it so i do have a time goal in mind i would like to do it in sub four hours i haven't really said that on social media to be honest with you and i don't know why i've said it to my friends and family i've set the goal in my head but i don't know why i haven't really said it on social media i think i'm just a little bit nervous of not achieving it but at this point i'm really hopeful i am proud of the training I have done I think I can show up on the day so fingers crossed I would absolutely love that that would be my dream so yeah but it's just that last like 10k I don't know what that's going to be like obviously I have never ran this far ever in my life I have gone to 32k in my training and then it's going to be 42 on the day so yeah I don't know how my body's going to be in that last 10k because I've never done it before I don't know if I'm going to be in agony I don't know if I'm going to be crawling at that point like I don't know what it's going to be like so that's the part I am nervous of but we're doing it we're going to do it anyway so okay so I am just heading out to do my tempo run this week's runs are very chill um all the hard work has been done so I just have two runs this week I have a tempo run which I'm doing now I got one kilometer fast three minute recovery pace and then I have a 5k I'm going to do on Wednesday I'm trying to get everything done as soon in the week as I can so I can just prioritize recovery and feeling the absolute best for the end of the weekend so that is the plan and it's obviously a beautiful day so I'm delighted to be out for my run um fit I am wearing my buff bunny shorts I absolutely adore these these are by far my favorite shorts but um, I'm not going to be wearing them for marathon on day simply because they're not pink which I know is stupid but um yeah I just have this long sleeve on don't expect it to be on for too long because I get hot when I run obviously but yeah let's take you on my tempo run from my massage and I actually can't get over how sore that actually was there was definitely a lot more tender tight spots than I thought but look that's why we went that's why we went so I definitely feel a bit better after I feel a bit looser I feel a bit lighter so yeah that was what it was for okay we are just back from a very chill five kilometer run and I am about to jump in at this bad boy here i bought this cold plunge tub on amazon it was literally like a hundred dollars maybe um i usually fill it up with the ice in my fridge but that's broken at the moment so i just bought a bag of ice from the garage um but i swear it has saved me on this marathon training like i usually just jump straight in it after a long run after after a long run it is beautiful like it just numbs the legs straight away and I think it's really really helped with my recovery like after my 30k when I stopped I like couldn't really walk and then I got in that and I was absolutely fine after so yeah Just about to 
head out the door, I am on my way downtown. I am going to a hot cold therapy session. So I think it's about 45 minutes to an hour of cold plunge and then hot exposure. And I'm really excited. This has actually come at a perfect time for me because I'm done my runs now for the week. I just have a small shake out run tomorrow, 2K. I'm done my prehab as well. So now it's just time for those legs to rest and recover. So I'm going to the float house for this session. They have very kindly gifted me this and they're helping me out on this road to recovery and optimal performance on the day. So I kind of touched on it yesterday about how important cold plunging has been in this marathon training for me. So I originally started cold plunging about a year ago and the main reasons I did it was actually for building mental strength and discipline. So doing hard things makes your resilience 10 times better. So that was a big reason for me and also just felt so amazing after it. Like it really just woke me up for the whole entire day and I felt great throughout the day, better than any coffee 100%. But in terms of my actual marathon training specific to that, it has been brilliant. I, I don't do it after every single run, but my big runs, those high intensity, those ones that just take it out of your body, I would jump straight into the ice bath and it was amazing. So to just jump straight in, numb your legs, it helps inflammation, it helps pain. And then to go into a hot shower has just relaxed my muscles and helped it so, so much. So I think today doing this before the marathon is just going to really get into those tight spots, just really relax my body and yeah, just make me feel my absolute best for the day. So I'm going to bring you with me. I will show you the hot cold and see how it goes. And the city's asleep awake I have a secret to give and it's all right 24 hours in a day don't let the shadows in my way I know you're gonna be okay staying up tonight cause we wake up chilling in bliss I think I'm ready for this Stars line up the time and feels right You could borrow my soul if we play the cards right Cause we speak up Chilling in bliss Don't appreciate the diss Caught fire but I've been around the bend Give yourself another hour and we'll loop around again much home now just popped down to the expo to grab my race number so it is definitely all getting a little bit real now I definitely think there's a couple of butterflies ha starting to happen in the valley so yeah I'm excited here I am with my race day number we're here we got it we can do it one thing people don't tell you is how obsessed you get with the weather I'm like obsessed with checking Sunday weather and it keeps changing every single day Right now it's looking like rain, which I'm not happy about. I checked in the morning and it said rain all morning on Sunday. And then I checked again and it said rain at 1 p.m., which would be okay because I'm hoping to be done before that. But we'll see. I wouldn't mind like a little bit of drizzle, but I don't want a pouring rain, you know? So yeah, we've got the number. It's happening. There's no backing out now. We have it. We got to do it. So I just made it to the gym. Um, my microphone is dead, so sorry if the sound is not the best but i came here to do a full body release today i do it so much better when i'm here than when i'm at home when i'm at home i just kind of like do it quickly i don't know i just don't really do it with intention but when i'm in the right environment i do it properly and i'm going to do it for like 30 minutes and you can just see behind me here i have the barbell the ball and the gun but full lower body release is the plan and for the rest of the day then is we're actually gonna to go to the cinema because I just need a distraction. Like I just don't wanna think about it because I'm definitely getting nervous. Um, the butterflies are definitely settling in. I could tell a while ago because I started to kind of lose my appetite. Like I get that little nauseous feeling. So yeah, it's definitely settling in. I'm trying to just embrace it all because I know it's part of the journey. I know it's like nervous and then it's gonna be exciting tomorrow. So I'm just trying to go with it right now. Um, 
but still getting my food in, being carb loading day today. I had a lovely, nice, big bagel breakfast and I just had some really good pasta. I'm gonna get some popcorn in the cinema. And then tonight, my plan is to have a nice warm Epsom salt bath before I go to bed, just to relax those muscles again even more. And probably just to relax me a little bit as well, so I have a good night's sleep. And yeah, I will see you guys in the morning then. You're probably, what the heck are you doing with the barbell? But the barbell is such a good quad piece. So what I do is I literally just pop the barbell up onto my quad like this. And it's a weight, right? So it's pushing down into my leg. So I'm just gonna roll it gently down the leg. And again, if I can feel like little bumps, little knots, I just hold there, apply a bit more pressure if you can, and then just keep rolling down the leg. There's gonna be some tight spots. If you're a runner, it's gonna be like right above the knee is the typical spot I find really, really tight, and the outside of your quad. So then just to get that, I just turn over a little bit. I am just keeping the leg relaxed. And same thing, I'm just gonna roll it down, nice and slow, get some top spots there. And just repeat that really. And stuff ready to go for tomorrow so here are the goods so of course we got my shoes um these are the new Sacconi elite endorphins carbon plate love them i got my lululemon socks we got the vest gels this is a snack i am going to have before the race starts i'm just going to have this while i'm waiting at the start line i've gone for full pink i absolutely love it and of course we got the race number i am I do need to actually fill these up. Um, I'm just gonna do one of electrolytes and then I am gonna bring some Tiger Balm, I think. I'll see in the morning when I pop on my vest, but this is just gonna be more of a placebo if I'm in starting to hit a bit of pain. I'm just gonna pop that on. Um, don't know if I'm gonna bring this, but I'm gonna put it on in the morning. It's for chafing. I don't really typically have issues with chafing, but yeah, I'm running for UK, so who, who knows? And then we got the gun. I'm gonna quick little release in the morning and this is for post marathon so I'm going to give this in a bag to Aaron to meet me at the finish line with cozy top to put on sliders get out of those other shoes and fill myself back up with electrolytes on my Powerade so we're looking good we are ready to go yeah I'm definitely feeling nervous but I'm okay I like it's okay I've done it now we show up now we just gotta do it and I'm going to do it and I know that once I start I'll be absolutely fine I think it's just this point right now is a bit nerve-wracking and I think when I get to the start line it's going to be a bit nerve-wracking but luckily I'm going to be with people I know so I think I'll be fine like a little bit of butterflies in the tummy but then I'll go and I'll be absolutely fine so yeah that is all for tonight I'm going to hop in a warm bath with some Epsom salts and then I'm going to chill and I'll see you guys in the morning Good morning, it's marathon day. I actually cannot believe I'm running a marathon today. Oh, scary. Definitely getting quite scared now, but we're getting ready. I am still trying to finish my oats. I knew that these would take me a while to get down because I am nervous today, um, but we're doing it. We're just getting ready. I'm gonna do a quick rollout stretch and then take you to the start line with me. These are the hair ties I use from Amazon. Um, they're scrunchies, but they, so they don't break my hair um, or give me headaches. Sometimes if they're too tight, they give me headaches, but they're really soft in my hair and just keep it up.
Hello! Guys, marathon day was actually just so incredible. It is one of the best days I've ever had. It is one of the best experiences and one of the best achievements I have ever done. I am so proud of myself. I absolutely shocked myself. Did not think I was very capable of that and I actually ran it really comfortably. I obviously had tough moments and I'm going to bring you through all of those right now but overall I had a brilliant experience, a positive experience and I'm just so proud of myself and my body and all that training, all that hard work has paid off but let me bring you guys through start to finish. I did not bring my camera with me for the rest of that day nor the next day. I really just wanted to be present in my little bubble. I was having so much feelings and so much emotions that I just had to kind of be in my own bubble and actually take a step back. I was feeling really overwhelmed by everything, but it was the best. I just wanted to be in that, be present, experience all the feelings and just take it all in and honestly process the day. There's just so much happened that I even found like Monday and Tuesday, I was like, oh, things were kind of starting to click with me about what happened. So it's insane. There's just so much happens on the day that I couldn't even take it all in. So. I'm really glad that I did take a step back, but I'm gonna catch you guys up on everything that you need to know about Marathon Day. So we got to the start line at 8 a.m. We're gonna go from the very start of the day. Um, race started at half eight, so we were about 30 minutes early. I think that was absolutely perfect because last year I remember coming to the half marathon. I think they recommended to come like an hour in advance and it was just too much. I just remember getting a bit cold, um, getting more nervous. So I was like, I'm not doing that this year. So it worked out perfectly. Aaron dropped myself and Nathan to the start line and I literally just peed, lined up and it was pretty much time to go. Um, the buzz on the start line is absolutely incredible. You can just like feel the nerves in the air from everyone, but it's brilliant like it's great energy there's music bumping they're counting you down um yeah it's absolutely insane we bumped into a couple of friends at the start line as well which was nice just to ease the nerves have a quick little chat and then it was pretty much time to go so I did decide to run this marathon with my friend Nathan um Nathan has experience he's done a couple of marathons before and he was happy to kind of like be my pacer, guide me, support me, encourage me, all of those things. And at the start, I wasn't sure because I'm so used to doing all my training on my own and being on my own, being on, in my head. So I wasn't sure, but I was like, you know what? It's always great to have someone by your side. So I went for it and it was the best decision I went with. Now I can't imagine doing a marathon on my own because it was just so great. And I just love sharing an experience with someone and someone being with you during that is kind of special. So oh god I'm getting emotional again I think just thinking about it all I thought I was okay by now but maybe I'm not <laughs> we started off and my aim was actually to start at like a 520 pace and I know they say to not go for it with all the guns blazing at the start but I actually just felt really good and really comfortable I had no earphones in um for the first like 12k I was just chatting to Nathan we were running I felt really comfortable I felt really calm my breath was good so I was like you know what I'm just going with it so I was at about a five minute pace and I stuck with that for a lot longer than I thought I'd be able to it just felt really good let me check what the hell I held that for like 23k Oh my god, well done me. I'll pop them up here. You can see I'm kind of alternating between a 5, 5, 10 pace, but I held this for so much longer than I thought I'd be, and I was comfortable. So I probably averaged around that five minute pace until like kilometer 23, and then I started getting a bit, little bit slower after that. Yeah, I'm just so proud how long I held that for, and it gave me so much room to get slower as I went on then, because I was going for that sub four marathon, so it gave me so much more wiggle room at the end. Um, but I know they don't recommend going in with all guns blazing, but it actually worked out perfectly for me. I found around the 10, 12K mark really hard. And I just remember thinking like, shit, because, I am only 12k into a 42 kilometer race um, and I was just like oh no I just remember feeling really hot and sweaty and I could like feel the salt already on my face um, and it just felt really humid and I was just like oh I just didn't feel very comfortable and honestly passed really quickly thank god we we got out of um, like UBC and then we we're pretty on the coast for the rest of it so I think that really helped just being in that kind of open just a bit of wind and that just cooled me down after that so that panic was over at that point um I did listen to a bit of music at that point I 
up to then I just really enjoyed being in my environment listening to the crowds and just kind of like listening to the rhythm of other people's feet really helped me stay on track and yeah then we had our supporters on the way they met us at four different points on the track so that actually just really kept me going like trying to get to that next point to see them and then obviously seeing them is so great and they had their cute little signs and everything so it's great to just keep you going and give you that kind of encouragement and that like rear to keep on going so that helps so so much I got to a point then and I wasn't really talking to Nathan anymore I was just like okay let's focus on this and one thing that he did really well was just always kind of ran a little bit ahead of me and I thought that that was really helpful because I always had a target to follow the pacers are not easy to see to be honest and I can't really fixate on someone because everyone's kind of running everywhere and everyone's different paces so it was really helpful just to watch him and stay with him and just give me that target I think that really helped me stay at my good pace um I think that if that wasn't there it is possible that I would have like slowed down a lot so it just kind of kept me going it kept me give me that encouragement to keep moving forward Another part that I did find really tricky is actually the huge crowds so around the like 28 kilometer mark there is so much people and it's like if you're familiar with Vancouver it's like Kitsilano area English Bay there is so much people on either side of you and the path is so narrow I actually found it really overwhelming and I'm so surprised by that like I thought I'd kind of love it and like love seeing my friends waving at people I actually I think I was just getting to a point where I was like this is getting hard um, I'm starting to feel a bit nauseous and I think I was just like I need to be on my own and not like smiling to the crowd so the last 10 kilometers is meant to be the absolute worst um it goes into stanley park there's no more spectators you're on your own you have 10 kilometers to go to the finish line and you're on your own you have no help you have no people shouting at you and honestly at that point i was really happy to be in that peaceful environment i think that people i was just like oh my god get me out of here and I got into the park and I felt so much better straight away Um, it's weird because that's the point where people normally have the turning point and I think I was just like whoo I was just so happy to not be overwhelmed by and like overstimulated by everyone um which I again I'm really surprised by because I'm not really that kind of person like I am like extroverted and all that so I thought I'd love all that but yeah I got into Stanley Park I turned off my music and um, that was starting to annoy me as well at that point and there was a point and I was like this is lovely I was like listening to the waves um but yeah it was just like mind over matter at that point again wasn't talking to Nathan the legs were slowing down the legs were hurting and it was just like head down let's go it was like I wasn't stopping at that point and the end is so near and it's just such a great feeling getting around that park like I was like okay get around this corner get around this corner and I knew that when I saw the city again I was there that I was so so close to the finish line so it's tough don't get me wrong but I'm like there's no way I'm stopping at that point like I am getting to that finish line and I'm stopping and it was just so funny at the end and um, Nathan was like how are you feeling and I was like oh, I just cannot wait to stop <laughs> at that point I was just done and it's brilliant because you're obviously in that quiet zone for like an hour in that 10k mark and then you get back to the street you're at the finish line and there is just such a buzz and I saw so many people I knew everyone was shouting for me and it is just such a great push to get you to the end and I honestly was feeling so strong like I am just so proud of my body for pushing and getting me to that finish line having that finish feeling getting your medal and um, you can see in this video I'm like just holding back my tears I am about to cry but I'm like pull it together Rachel <laughs> but one thing that shocked me that people did not warn me about is the pain you experience at the finish line I felt fine the whole run like of course yeah my legs were getting tight things were getting sore but when I stopped oh my god my whole leg seized I was in so much pain and I think I was just didn't know what to do I think I just didn't expect the finish line to be hard I had Stanley Park in my head so much that that ten, last 10k was going to be horrendous so I was like finish line amazing it's going to be great I'm going to feel amazing that I'm done I'm going to get my medal I'll be buzzing and I was just like shit like I feel like everything just hit me with a ton of bricks and again I just didn't know what to do I was like so overwhelmed I was like do I cry do I sit down do I flop down on the floor I just didn't know what to do um so that took me about 20 minutes to get over I would say I did sit down for a little bit and then my friends came over and honestly again I was just like so overwhelmed by everything it just took me a minute to calm the legs down but 
they were fine after that and after that I was absolutely fine and I got to celebrate with a little bit with my friends and honestly it is all worth it and it's funny because now I'm like oh that pain was fine it was just short and sweet but I do remember in the moment being like this this hurts <laughs> um but yeah it just I think good that happens on the day just smushes any of those bad feelings so for me it was just all positive um we were very lucky because literally in the car home it just started pouring rain so I'm so glad that we didn't get caught in that the conditions were really good it was just cloud it was probably like 10 12 degrees um nice temperature to be running a marathon in I wouldn't want any hotter I wouldn't want any colder so I was really happy with that and yeah I just went out with my friends then I don't know how I kept pushing through I think the adrenaline was just so high on the day I came home showered we celebrated with some food some margaritas that the next day I was so surprised with how okay I felt. Now, of course my legs were sore. It felt like I did a heavy leg day, like that kind of delayed onset muscle soreness feeling, but I was shocked by how okay I was. I was able to walk around, I went for a walk. I didn't have any pain. I just presumed I'd have some knee pain, foot pain. And um, they're the two that I had during training. So to not have any, I was just like, this is amazing. And obviously again just a moment of proudness of my body I was like I did put in that hard work and that training and it's clearly paid off because my body was ready for the marathon and quick recovery as well I was like well done and it helped that my lovely boyfriend treated me to a spa day that was the loveliest thing to do the next day after a marathon so if you have a marathon or run or race coming up definitely recommend booking into a spa the next day it is going to be absolutely amazing it's brilliant for the recovery and I just appreciated it so much the body felt like I said just a little sore but I probably was more mentally drained than anything to be honest with you and um, like I already mentioned the motions of the day the roller coaster of the day the adrenaline the adrenaline crash taking all the information in processing everything of the day I think my brain was just a bit wrecked from it so I am glad I took the day off work the next day and just got that extra bit of rest for myself but yeah I was just a bit wrecked and just recovering from the day and honestly I'm just so sad it's over I'm like what do I do now at this point I worked so hard for this and this was the big lead up this moment so I definitely feel a little lost now I just don't know what to do but you will see me running another marathon and you will see me continue to run because I absolutely adore it at this point in my training. It brings me joy. I love the sunshine getting outside in it. So why wouldn't I do it? Uh, let's see where the next road takes us. I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm going to leave you guys there today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all of your support over the last couple of months. Thank you for your well wishes. Thank you for your congratulations. Thank you for supporting me through my injuries and helping me out the other side. It just makes it all that more worthwhile and it makes that reward so much sweeter when you have to work for it. If you have any questions, if you have anything you would like to know about marathons, if you want some help with your coaching, please let me know. I would absolutely love to help you guys. Everything is linked below that I wore on the day. And yeah, let's touch back soon. I will chat to you guys very soon.